So far we have understood B3, cluster index and secondary index. All three of these are very important concepts when we are talking about indexes. It's very difficult to understand all this concept with the help of regular slides. Now let's understand all three concepts with the help of visual representation. As all three are interrelated to each other, I will attempt to explain them in one single flow. Now with the help of the diagram, we will understand how cluster index B3 is built. Here is a simple example where we have root node, intermediate node and leaf node. In cluster index of InnoDB, we only have data in a leaf node. A root node and intermediate node will have a pointer to the next level node. Here is the data page and for simplicity, we will assume that a single data page can contain 10 rows or 10 entries. If we have only 10 rows in our table, we only need a single page. Let's assume that we have 10 more rows from 11 to 20. In that case, we will need now another page. The first page at lift level node 0 will have row 1 to 10 and second page will have rows from 11 to 20. At this point of time, we know that page 1 contains 1 to 20 row and page 2 contains 11 to 20 row. However, database need one more page to make those entries. Let's introduce one more level over here. Now, this new page is root page in this scenario. It's on level 1 and is a single page. It has a two entries over here. First entry indicates that row 1 to 10 is now in page 0 to 1 and row 11 to 20 are in page 0 colon 2. If we have 10 more pages over here. In this case, this entire 1 colon 1 page will be filled. In that scenario, we will need another page over here and one more page on the top of it to maintain all the entries. And that will bring us to this kind of structure. In this example, we have leaf node which will contain data and pointer to the next page and we will have intermediate node which will have a pointer to the leaf node. The root node will also have a pointer to the intermediate nodes. Now to better understand what we have just discussed, let's try to traverse into our cluster B3 index. For example, we want to retrieve row number 22. From visual inspection, we'll know that row number 22 will be in this page. However, when MySQL engine want to get row number 22, it will have to traverse from root node to intermediate node and end up on leaf node. Let's see how it works. First, it will go to root node and will ask where actually row number 22 belongs. Root node will send it to intermediate node on a left side. Intermediate node which contains location to row 1 to 30. Now, MySQL engine will read this intermediate node and try to figure it out where exactly row 22 belongs to. The intermediate node will point it to this particular leaf node for row number 22. Similar way, it will traverse from root node to intermediate node and leaf node for any other value which we are trying to retrieve. If you pay attention, you will notice that no matter what number of the row it is trying to retrieve, it always have to jump through root node, intermediate node and leaf node. The amount of the jump or hops it has to do always remains same. Hence it is called B3. Let's understand one more time how traversing cluster B3 index happens. Let's assume that we are still looking for row number 22. From root node, MySQL engine will go to intermediate node and from this intermediate node, it will go to the leaf node which contains row number 22. However, if our query says retrieve row from 22 to 32, in this case, it will read this entire node and instead of going back to the root node, it will now use the link between two leaf node and will directly continue reading next rows from the next page. When you are retrieving range data from your cluster index, in that case, MySQL engine always locates the first record in a leaf node and after that it will use either forward pointer or a backward pointer and continue reading the entire range. It will save lots of disk I.O. and extra lookup in B3 index. Now, this was pretty straightforward explanation of how cluster B3 index works as well as how locating accurate data happens in the index. Remember, in the case of the cluster index, all the data is located in a leaf node. This particular information is not true if we are talking about secondary index for InnoDB. Let's understand how secondary index works next. 